this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the HyperX Pulsefire Haste Wireless. This is a wireless update to what was already a fantastic mouse. I really liked the original Pulsefire Haste when I had my hands on it, and now I finally got my hands on the wireless version, and I've been testing it out for a little while, so I want to bring you my thoughts on what it's like to use, show you what's included in the box, talk about the various things of interest, and show off the mouse from various angles. Now this mouse is available in both black and white. Unfortunately, I don't have the white version to show you, but it looks like the more appealing one. However, if you want a really stealthy mouse, then this one is the one to go for. As you can see, it only has one RGB lighting zone on the mouse wheel, and I'll show you some more of that later on. And you have grip tape included in the box that you can add on, which makes it look even more stealthy. Now this is an interesting lightweight mouse, and it has a number of highlights to it that include up to 100 hours of battery life with a 370 milliamp lithium iron polymer battery housed within its shell. And I think the fact that they've managed to keep it light while also having a powerful battery inside is an interesting point. And I'll talk about why that is later on. I'm also going to do a click test at the end of the video so you can hear the buttons and what they're like. Now this is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless mouse. There's no Bluetooth connectivity, just 2.4 gigahertz. And in the box you obviously get that dongle which you can see on the left hand side in there. And you also get a USB-C charging cable. So it's a detachable cable with a little adapter extender dock on the end of that as well. You'll also see that there is grip tape and extra PTFE skates as well included. So you have a selection of nice things included in the box. Now this is a relatively affordable mouse. The original wired version is obviously more affordable. This is slightly more expensive, but it's far from being very expensive. And yet it offers a number of interesting highlights and things of interest. It's a very matte finish honeycomb shell to it, obviously. That keeping that sort of traditional lightweight honeycomb design that seems to be the trend right now. Get up to 16,000 max DPI with four different levels set of 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. On the underside, you'll find there's a little housing for your USB dongle and not using it, so you can plop that in there. And then, as I said, USB-C charging, which will please many people. This is 450 IPS speed and 40G's max acceleration. So the specs are kind of okay, and I'll leave more on them in the description. Nothing that's going to blow your socks off. This is far from a pro-level mouse. Like it's not the high-end extreme specs that you might see on something a bit more expensive. But that doesn't mean it isn't good to use, and that has been one of the highlights that I found it really nice to use, just like it did the original wired version. The wireless one gives you some flexibility because it has a bigger battery life, but it also comes with this little adapter. So you can put the dongle in there, plug the cable in, your PC on one end, and then the USB-C connection on the other. You can extend the range of the dongle if you need it. So you can put this closer to your mouse if your PC is a bit further away. That also gives you easy access if you want to unplug the cable and plug the mouse in for charging purposes. Up to 100 hours of battery life though, so potentially you can get a really good amount of battery out of it before you need to plug it in. I certainly haven't found out to plug it in a lot, and one of the things that's interesting is the mouse wheel changes colour, so it flashes red when you are running low on battery, so you actually have a visual cue to let you know really obviously that the mouse needs charging, which is a nice touch, I think. It's not so obnoxious. Obviously, you can see there's no other RGB lighting here. It's very subtle, just in the mouse wheel. You can also obviously tweak settings and the amount of use on how much you use it will vary. It will change how much the battery lasts for, but in my experience, I haven't had to plug it in that often and it's been really nice. The other thing, PTFE skates, kind of small, but they still do the job. It slips around the desk nicely. They're not too scratchy. Good response from it. And because it's lightweight, it's really easy to move around. That USB-C cable is also really floppy. So when it is plugged in, there's not a problem. Now, as I said, there is grip tape included in the box. This mouse is designed to be lightweight and it has a matte finish on the outside of the shell. So I found that even a standard is pretty grippy just like the original. So there's not really a problem with grip. However, if you have particularly sweaty hands, then you might obviously want to add on the grip tape as an additional thing. And that's something of interest potentially there. Now this mouse is obviously designed to be lightweight. So if you're adding in the grip tape, you might be concerned about adding on some extra weight. But what I found is actually it doesn't add very much weight at all. So it's worth bearing that in mind. And I'll show you in a second 
just how much difference that makes. So you've got a nice little package, obviously with the swappable feet included as well. So if things wear out over time, then you can potentially swap them out. And the 80 million clicks from the switches should mean it stands up as well. As I said, stick with me to the end of the video to hear a switch test. But what I found is there's very little in the way of issue. It's a nice solid mouse and actually the response from both the switches, the main switches, is actually very similar, comparable. Usually sometimes you'll find a sort of disparity between them where they're not sort of accurately paired so there's some sort of sound difference or feedback difference. You can see the mouse from multiple angles. Underneath you have the switch to turn it on and off and then on the side obviously those thumb buttons. They're kind of shiny as you can see and perhaps a little bit recessed but I haven't had a problem with them I find them fairly easy to use fairly easy to access and no problems again satisfying click action from them above the mouse on top behind the mouse wheel there's a tiny tiny little DPI button which you can see there you can switch between those various DPI levels that are set in the software now it's worth bearing in mind there's only one onboard profile for this mouse so you can't really have a load of profiles saved to the mouse there's only one so just keep that in mind when you make changes you can't have multiple different settings for different games so that's perhaps a bit of a letdown for some people it is worth noting as well that it has six programmable buttons and you can change the dpi button so if you're not interested in dpi levels if you just use one as standard and you want to reassign that button to something else you can you can also select to choose from different macros and things like that so you can record macros and a multitude of other settings within hyperx's ingenuity software so lots of things going on for a fairly affordable mouse and a lot of interesting highlights immediately and it, it's very very understated so it's very stealthy no rgb lighting that will shine through the shell for example and i think that's probably a good thing i personally actually like a bit of rgb lighting on my mouse but it really varies on your personal preference if you don't care about it then this is great and actually the rgb lighting on this one is actually kind of useful as well because you use it to basically get an indicator of when the mouse is running low on charge so it's not just for show obviously you can see it going through various different color schemes but it's not particularly fancy and that's beneficial because it means it's not draining the battery super quick so if you had fancier rgb you obviously has less battery life so something to bear in mind usb-c charging cable means it's really easy to plug in and it will plug in in any direction so far less faff than a micro usb cable you might wonder why i just showed plugging it in multiple directions there that's because i've actually seen usb-c cables on other mice where it would only plug in one way which was kind of weird so i always test that now now the grip tape is a personal thing whether you're going to add this on or not i added it onto the original wired version and you'll see that in a second and i didn't want to add this on initially but then i wanted to see what the weight difference would be you can see it has a honeycomb effect in the same way the shell does and it certainly does add some level of extra grippiness to it it's quite a bit more grippy because of it it's a little bit fiddly to put on you also have the extra ptfe feet included on here and obviously they've got protective blue covers on there which you need to take off so you can swap them out if you want to so there's some nice extra additions included in the box with what is already an affordable mouse so some good selection of things included in there and here you can see it against the wired version now you'll notice there are very few differences between the two other than the wireless in fact that's basically the only change they've made to the mouse and that's for a good reason because the original pulse fire haste was already a fantastic mouse so they really didn't need to change much but you can see what the difference is between the two in terms of one having grip tape and one not now i've been using the pulse fire haste wired for quite a while it's been knocking around i kind of grab it every now and then when i need to use it and as you can see it hasn't really got particularly tatty we even with that grip tape on so it still looks good over time it's not been my main but it has had some extra use since i got it originally and reviewed it and then you can see that both the shell and the grip tape sort of stood up to that and it ends up still looking pretty nice ip55 rated so it should be protected from dust and dirt ingress it's worth keeping that in mind if you're worried about the holes now i want to talk about the weight because this is one of the things that i thought was interesting so the wireless version weighs in at 61 grams which is quite light it's one of the lightest mice i've seen and reasonably light for this size it's quite a small mouse as i'll show you but not the tiniest i've seen either now if you put the usb-c dongle in which you're unlikely to do but even if you do that just knocks it up to 63 grams if you store that in there then plug the usb-c cable in it's just a couple of extra grams which i thought was interesting but what is interesting for the most part about this is actually the difference between the wired and the wireless version so you'll see if i put the wired version on there and make sure the cable isn't on the scales it weighs in at 63 and the wireless one 
weighs in at 63 as well. So you can see 62-ish grams on the wired version, and then the wireless is obviously 62, 63 with that USB-C dongle in. So if you take the dongle out and just put it back on there, 61 grams for the wireless version. Now this is worth bearing in mind because for the most part, generally speaking, if you have a wired mouse and then you have a wireless version of that mouse, the wireless version is always heavier because obviously it has to have a battery in it and it also has to have the transmitter to send the signal to your PC to, and back and forth with the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So this mouse has that extra tech inside it and yet it is the same-ish weight as the wired version which is pretty incredible and I think hats off to HyperX for managing to do that and delivering a mouse that does a good job and yet is still lighter because obviously if you're going for a lightweight mouse and you go for the wireless one and it's heavier than the wired version then that might be a complaint but what I've done here is actually made a mouse that's very very comparable so a lot of really cool things going on there I thought that was pretty interesting and the grip tape is relatively easy to add on you might have noticed that I did it ever so slightly off it's not perfect in the way I do it but I found that you can actually take it off and put it back on again with relative ease as well so that shouldn't be an issue if you are particular about the accuracy of it so you can see on the left switch for example it's not covering the whole of the switch perfectly and aligning symmetrically with the other side however there's not much of an issue there really and so that is the difference between them and then obviously it gives you a little bit of a better grip and I think a nicer feel. Uh, at the end of the video I'll leave a comparison with the sound test so you can hear what the sound, mouse sounds like both with and without the grip tape. So if you want to see what the difference is there you'll be able to do that as well. This grip tape makes it look even more stealthy though. <laughs> it is really really a sort of matte finish to it and look and feel so it's very stealthy mouse and a little bit more comfortable because of it as well so a nice bonus addition to that lineup the other thing that i thought was cool is you might be concerned that adding that grip tape will add an extra load of weight onto it and it actually doesn't surprisingly it really does not add that much it is now up to 63 grams which if you remember is basically a couple of grams more than it what it was without it so adding the grip tape on basically adds just a smidge of extra weight so it really isn't a concern unless you are really trying to shed as much weight as possible but it is still very light now i said already that this is quite a small mouse i feel i'm a palm gripper so and my hands are kind of big i think it feels a bit small to me however i didn't have a problem with it or with the wired version i liked both of them because of the fit in the hand it does fit nicely it pushes up into the palm quite well with that overall design as you can see my thumb and pinky and that do end up rubbing on the desk a little bit but i do have relatively easy access to those side buttons and it's very comfortable to use i've been using it for working all day long and then going into video editing and gaming at night not had any problems with the comfort now if you use a claw style grip you might find it better or if you have smaller hands then that might be ideal so I think if you are looking for a small mouse, then this might actually be a good recommendation. The wired or the wireless version of this mouse is probably one of my favorites in terms of the smaller mice I've tried. So worth considering and a very good mouse for a number of different reasons. So stick with me now as I go into software and show you what you can do there and then stick around for the sound test. Here we are in the Ingenuity software and you'll notice that it's now at 100% battery and one of the things I've noticed is that it actually has fast charging capabilities as well, seems to charge really quickly. Click on that and you'll also see you can get a low power warning at a certain percentage. So what I was saying earlier on about the light flashing on the mouse wheel, you can actually adjust when that happens. You can also adjust the RGB brightness lighting options there and you can do things like set the polling rate. You'll see there's a liftoff distance adjusted between one and two mil, and you can go to a thousand hertz polling rate, and that is the default. And the one important point is, as I mentioned earlier on, there is only one profile on there. So any changes you make, you'll save to the mouse, and then that's what it was set at. You can see that there are the various different lighting effects available here, but to be honest, it's such a minimal RGB lighting zone, it's not really worth focusing on very much. Now the buttons, you have six programmable buttons. As I mentioned already, you can program the DPI button left and right, and obviously the mouse wheel, and then the side buttons as well. So if you want to go through there, you'll see that you have the option to reprogram all sorts of things into either a keyboard action, and a different mouse function. So you could assign a DPI toggle, for example, to one of the side buttons, media playback buttons for music playback and other things or you can create a macro so you can create any sort of macro you want you can just go in and record it 
you can type out something or you could set a number of different actions in there record it you can set it to play once repeat you can go in you can set the delay timer so you can actually choose how much delay there is on that and you can do all sorts of things in there relative ease and then obviously assign it to a specific button you can fully disable a button as well if you want to so you have that option too so there's plenty of flexibility in there and it's really straightforward there are multiple different dpi levels and you can see if i change between them you'll see a notification in the windows center down the bottom on the right hand side and you'll also see it changes the rgb like so as default the bottom one is 400 and that sets it to red so briefly it will change to the color of the dpi level on the mouse wheel and then it will default back to the rgb lighting that you've chosen in the lighting section you obviously have four different levels that you can go between as standard but you can set extra ones if you want to so you could set another one and you can also obviously adjust these and customize them to your personal preference and cycle between them with relative ease it's quite a good range you can go all the way up to 16,000 but you'll probably find you'll sit somewhere in the lower numbers i tend to like the 800 or 1600 levels but you can tweak those quite easily so a really straightforward bit of software to use and overall a great mouse to game with be sure to stick around now to listen to the sound test on the switches and you'll see as i said earlier on that both the left and right buttons sound very similar and give a good feedback in their response and that way there's very little pre-travel or any nonsense like that and also the side buttons have a satisfying click action to them as well this has been the provoke pro and if you enjoyed this video smash that subscribe button drop me a comment and come by my discord to let me know what you think thanks for watching This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.